With the aid of Varus, Tyrion is brought to the home of Illyrio Mopatis in Pentos. Varys attempts to persuade Tyrion to assist in his goal to restore House Targaryen to the Iron Throne, but Tyrion simply wishes to drink himself to death after all that he has been through, renouncing his lordship and caring nothing for the stability of Westeros, a country he is done with after nothing but pain from its politics. Later, Tyrion questions Varys on his motives for setting him free. Varys reveals his brother Jaime had asked him to and that he did for the benefit of the Seven Kingdoms. Varys then states that his goal was to bring peace and prosperity upon the kingdoms where those without power would never be prey to those who do. Tyrion merely states in a jaded tone that the former will always become prey to the latter, which is how the powerful become and stay that way in the first place. The two discuss that the Seven Kingdoms needs a ruler stronger than Tommen, but gentler than Stannis. Tyrion wishes Varys luck on trying to find the right man, but Varys makes Tyrion one final offer. Varys tells him that he can simply drink himself to death here in Pentos, or ride with him to Marine to meet Daenerys Targaryen. After a moment, Tyrion agrees. Tyrion and Varys depart Pentos in a large carriage. Tyrion remains despondent, and as he promised, he is continuing to drink himself into a stupor. Varys explains that they are traveling to Marine by way of Volantis. Varys points out that Tyrion was an effective ruler when he was acting Hand of the King and that each of them were outsiders due to their deformities, a eunuch and a dwarf. They enjoyed accumulating power, he says, but they also wore themselves off from other people, like hiding inside of a large carriage as they are now, but deep down, they were never satisfied being separate from society. Tyrion remains depressed and continues to insist that he's tired of being confined in a box of some sort. Varys, however, again warns him that he must remain hidden and it is unsafe to be seen publicly. Cersei has promised a lordship to any man who brings her his head. Tyrion scoffs and rhetorically asks if Cersei is going to kill every dwarf in the world in the hope of eventually catching him. After days of confinement in the carriage, an impatient Tyrion eventually opts to get through Volantis on foot. The pair move through the long bridges markets, where Varys explains the meaning of the various tattoos Volantine slaves must sport. Varys nearly loses Tyrion but finds him observing the sermon of a red priestess. Tyrion says he is curious, since Thoros of Myr was the only red priest in King's Landing. The red priestess evangelizes in High Valyrian, telling the tale of how she was once a slave herself. She preaches of a prophesied savior, a dragon queen. Tyrion's interest in the scene wanes when the priestess stares directly into his eyes. Tyrion next leads Varys to a brothel. Catching sight of a prostitute dressed as Daenerys, Varys tells Tyrion that a woman who inspires both sermons and whores is probably worth meeting. Tyrion woos a dark-haired prostitute, but when she finally agrees to service him, he finds that he can't bring himself to patronize her. He then goes to urinate off the side of the bridge, with Varys losing sight of him. As Tyrion finishes, he is abducted by Jorah Mormont, who declares that he is taking him to, the Queen. Now at the mercy of his captor, Tyrion is thrown into a stolen boat by Jorah and they set sail for Marine. En route, Tyrion pesters Jorah with muffled whining until he relents and removes Tyrion's gag. Tyrion notices that they are traveling east and not west towards Cersei in King's Landing. Jorah reveals that he is taking Tyrion to the queen he serves, Daenerys Targaryen. Tyrion is pleasantly surprised and tries to convince Jorah that they are on the same side since he was traveling to meet Daenerys anyway. He accurately deduces who Jorah is by his appearance and equipment, and correctly assumes that Jorah must have been banished by Daenerys because she discovered that he was spying on her for Varys. Tyrion mockingly asks Jorah if he really believes that he will earn a pardon for simply delivering him to Daenerys, believing the opposite outcome just as likely. Fed up with his captive, Jorah strikes Tyrion across the face to keep him quiet. As Jorah and Tyrion continue their journey to Marine, and following Jorah's violent reaction to a previous conversation, Tyrion tries to civilize their relationship and asks where they are. As Jorah stands up to look at the foggy ruins on the horizon, Tyrion deduces that they are going to pass through the remains of Old Valyria, a shorter route to Marine and one which pirates will avoid because of Valyria's reputation. Tyrion is apprehensive, but still excited to see the ruins of what was once the greatest civilization in the world. As they catch glimpses of domes, towers and aqueducts, Tyrion recites a poem about the doom of Valyria, with Jorah joining in at the end. Suddenly, through the fog, they see Drogon fly into view. 
Although he had been hearing about the dragons for some time, Tyrion is still awed to see one in person, though the beast does not notice them. They are suddenly attacked by stone men, men whose grayscale infection has reached its pinnacle and transformed them into feral monsters. During the fight, Tyrion falls overboard and dragged under by a stone man, but he is rescued by Jorah and they make it to a beach, where Tyrion regains consciousness. Jorah finally frees Tyrion from his binds and notices that none of the stone men managed to touch him. Tyrion thanks Jorah for saving his life, and they decide to seek out a fishing village to acquire another boat, or walk the rest of the way to Marine. Jorah tells Tyrion to get some rest as he goes for firewood, but unbeknownst to Tyrion, Jorah has been infected with grayscale. Tyrion and Jorah continue their quest to Marine on foot. Tyrion is annoyed that they didn't find any villages to steal a boat or supplies from as Jorah had hoped, so they're slowly walking and only have berries and roots to eat. The topic of just why Tyrion was even in Volantis comes up, and Tyrion is surprised that Jorah did not ask earlier. He explains that he actually fled from Westeros because he killed his own father. He says he did it because his father tried to have him executed for a crime he didn't commit, and then he found his father screwing the woman he loved. Tyrion then says that despite how miserable Jorah is now, at least he can say that he had a good father. Jorah asks how he could have known his father Jor Mormont, but Tyrion explains he visited the wall once and met him, he was a great leader who seemed to genuinely care about all of his men, a rare thing in the world, but now as the eulogy for Night's Watch members goes, the world will not see his like again. Jorah is shocked to realize he means that his father is dead. Tyrion becomes apologetic and says he thought that Jorah knew already. Jorah asks how he died. Tyrion says he only knows the report he heard, which said that his father led an expedition beyond the wall, but there was a mutiny, and Jor was murdered by his own men. Jorah processes this in silent grief, then changes the subject by saying that they have to keep moving. Tyrion openly questions Jorah's motives, and when Jorah claims that he came to believe in Daenerys when he saw her emerge from the fire unharmed with the dragon hatchlings, Tyrion is convinced, but still expresses doubt as to whether or not Daenerys will be a good ruler, given that her family was known for succumbing to madness due to their compound inbreeding, particularly her father, whom many still call the Mad King. However, they are spotted and captured by slavers bound for Volantis. The lead slaver, Malco, deems Tyrion as useless and orders his throat cut and his penis removed to be sold to a cock merchant, as he believes dwarf cocks bring good luck. Tyrion, however, convinces them to do it when they have reached the cock merchant, buying himself some time, and when Malco mentions that Daenerys has reopened the fighting pits in Marine, Tyrion successfully convinces Malco to take them to Marine in order to put Jorah, who is a renowned Westerosi fighter, in the fighting pits and make them rich. On the outskirts of Marine, after Jorah is sold to Yezan's Okagas, Tyrion attempts to convince Yezan to buy him as well, and viciously beats his captor with his own chain to prove his worth. Yezan relents and buys Tyrion, but mostly for his comedic value. They are taken to Dezonax Pit, a small fighting pit, which will celebrate the opening of the games. When they hear that Daenerys is present, Jorah immediately enters the fight in the arena, while Tyrion struggles to cut his chain until a guard comes and does it for him. Tyrion enters the arena just as Jorah is being taken away, since Daenerys still hasn't forgiven him, and reveals himself as Jorah's gift. He introduces himself as Tyrion Lannister, and meets Daenerys face to face at last. Both Tyrion and Jorah are brought before Daenerys inside the Great Pyramid. Daenerys initially advocates executing Tyrion as revenge against the Lannisters for betraying her family, but Tyrion points out that he killed his mother in childbirth and shot his father in the heart before fleeing. She asks him advice on what to do with Jorah. Tyrion persuades her to spare him, but suggests banishing him again since he did effectively betray her trust. Later, while having wine, Tyrion and Daenerys agree that they both had cruel fathers, and Tyrion promises to explain why he killed Tywin someday, should she decide to spare him. Tyrion admits that though he believes Daenerys is no better than her father, he admits that he traveled to Meereen because Varys convinced him that she may very well be the best monarch for the Seven Kingdoms. He believes that Varys was correct in his assessment, and notes that Varys is the only person he can trust aside from his brother Jaime. The mention of Jaime, who killed her father, prompts Daenerys to suggest executing Tyrion, but Tyrion reacts with indifference, claiming that he was ready to drink himself to death in Pentos and still welcomes death if Daenerys prefers it, given the rate of how his own life had become as of late. 
Daenerys ultimately decides not to kill or banish Tyrion, but to take him as an advisor on how to reclaim the Iron Throne. Tyrion suggests that Daenerys stay in Marine, as she may do more good in Essos than in Westeros. Daenerys assures Tyrion that she will stay in Marine to ensure there is no more slavery but states that Essos is not her home. Tyrion counters that no one will support her in Westeros, but Daenerys somewhat idealistically declares that the common people will support her. Tyrion generously assumes that this will happen, which it generally doesn't, but then he reminds Daenerys that Marine has been in a state of chaos without the combined support of the Great Masters and the Small Folk, and extends this to Westeros and its Great Houses. He notes that Houses Targaryen and Stark are effectively dead or scattered due to the combined actions of the two terrible fathers. Neither House Lannister nor House Baratheon of Dragonstone will ever support her claim in light of their histories with the Targaryens. Tyrion says that leaves House Tyrell, who originally sided with the Crown in Robert's rebellion and might be willing to help her due to Cersei's recent schemes against them, but that it still isn't enough. Daenerys stubbornly likens the Great Houses, including her own House Targaryen, to spokes on a wheel, one on top of the others, and on and on, crushing the commoners beneath them in their struggle for supremacy. Tyrion sarcastically warns that others have dreamt of stopping the wheel, but Daenerys clarifies that she isn't planning to stop the wheel, she intends to break it. Tyrion attends the opening of the Great Games in Dazonax Pit along with Daenerys, his Darzo Lorak, Dario Naharis, and Masande. He playfully banters with Hisdar and Dario about which fighters will win owing to what advantages, such as strength or speed, and after Hisdar lectures Daenerys about the requisitions of holding on to power, Tyrion coldly quips that Tywin would have liked him. In the second round of the games, Jorah appears as one of the combatants and is almost killed. Tyrion urges Daenerys to stop the games before Jorah is killed, but he is saved by another fighter. Suddenly, a surprise attack by the Sons of the Harpy devastates the fighting pit. Tyrion saves Masande by killing one of the Sons and he runs with Daenerys and the others into the center of the fighting pit, where they are surrounded. He later watches in obvious shock when Drogon enters the pit and sets several Sons ablaze. When Daenerys flies off on Drogon's back, Tyrion is left struck with awe as he watches her fly through the sky on dragon back. In the aftermath, Tyrion sits in the throne room with Dario and Jorah. Grey Worm recovers and Masande introduces him to Tyrion. Tyrion concludes that since Drogon flew north, he and Dario must head in that direction if they are to find Daenerys, getting into an argument with Jorah over his status as a Lannister and Jorah having betrayed and been exiled twice by Daenerys. Dario breaks up the argument, convincing Tyrion to trust Jorah and allow him to come, since he did save Daenerys in the fighting pit, but at the same time questions Tyrion's skills in tracking and combat and deeming him unfit to join in such a dangerous mission. Instead, Dario advises Tyrion to stay in Marine and rule on Daenerys's behalf, knowing of his political skills from his time as Hand of the King, with Grey Worm enforcing Tyrion's rule with the Unsullied and Missandei as interpreter, wishing him luck on keeping the city together. Later on, Tyrion, from atop the pyramid, watches Dario and Jorah depart Marine to find Daenerys. He is joined by Varys, who playfully teases him for abandoning him and admits he found him through his little birds. Varys congratulates Tyrion for winning Daenerys's favor without him. Varys alludes to the political instability in Marine, and the opportunities it presents for Tyrion. Through their bantering, they vow to help each other hold Marine together. Tyrion then wholeheartedly admits that he missed Varys.